Southern weekend, we're taking a summertime swing through the South. We've got beaches, boardwalks, and banana bread French toast. Great, let's go eat it. We're golfing by the water, or should we say golfing in the water? Oh, into the water we went. We'll check out a garden paradise which doubles as an art museum. Over 2,000 works of art. And is this a bar or a laboratory? We'll give you a hint. The drinks are cold and delicious. Oh, yeah. So grab your sunscreen and beach hat as we explore Myrtle Beach, South Carolina on the Southern Weekend. I'm Molly McKinney. I travel across the South meeting amazing people. We're dancing, we're having a good oh, time. Right. What tasting delicious food. That is outstanding. And exploring great new places to visit. I love weekends in the South, and I think you will too. Let's go check it out. So come join the adventure as we start the Southern Weekend. With its wide beaches, a mile-long boardwalk, great restaurants and shops, and family fun attractions, Myrtle Beach truly has something for everybody. So I can't wait to explore it today and find out why it's known as the Grand Strand of the South. My first stop, meeting my tour guide, Jamie Arnold, the chief meteorologist at WMBF in Myrtle Beach. How are you? Welcome I'm to Myrtle good. Beach. Thank you so much for being here. Man, you coordinated the perfect weather for us today. Uh, absolutely picture perfect. It's always like this in Myrtle really? Beach. Really? Oh, always, I promise. I have to admit, <laughs> I was really excited when I found out I was meeting you in front of the sky wheel, but I hope we get to ride this. I hope you're not teasing me out here. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go up in there. It is the best view of Myrtle Beach you could ask for. I bet this is yeah. the perfect way to ease me into Myrtle. Yep, absolutely perfect. Perfect. Well, let's go do, let's it. do it. You ready? Yeah. So when we get all the way to the very top, 214 feet above sea level, yeah, not only that, but on a beautiful day like this, yeah. you can see all the way north, 20 miles or so to really? Cherry Grove, which is all the way up near the North Carolina border. Holy cow, plus the view, 20 miles. Yeah, plus the view out over the ocean, which is absolutely spectacular. So this really is the this best way to see Myrtle Beach. The best way to see it in a snapshot. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely beautiful. After you. Thank you. Thank you. Myrtle Beach is kind of the hub of what's called the Grand Strand, which is tiny little towns all up and down the beach. That's um, so it starts way down there at Myrtle's Inlet, Surfside Beach, Garden City, then here at Myrtle Beach. And if you look all the way down that way, so that's all the way up near the North Carolina border. And then of course the beaches on a beautiful day like this, everybody's on the beach. It seems like it's a really family focused vacation destination. It's like a family tradition. I grew up vacationing in Myrtle Beach with my parents. Uh, my parents grew up vacationing here with my grandparents. Um, and now I live here. So, yes. And when you live in Myrtle Beach, everybody you, you know yes. comes to visit. Here's your picture. Oh, look at us. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's a riot. Thank you. Appreciate it. We walk out this way. OK, thank you. So this is Mad Myrtle's Ice Creamery. Sorry. Doesn't get any better than that. Hey, how are you? We're good. Oh, man. Jamie, this looks delicious. Can I get one of each? Uh, what are you going to get? Um, I don't know. I'm a cookie dough guy. I am that's too. Kind of, Perfect. Kind of thing, yeah. I'm going to do the same. We can do one, two, or three scoops of ice cream on any kind of cone. I'm going to do one scoop okay. on a cookie cone. Okay. Would you like any sprinkles? We have three sprinkles. Always get sprinkles. Here you are. Thank you so much. Here you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see how good you are. <laughs> I think I was better when I was 12. <laughs> oh, 40. 40? It has to be rigged, obviously. Uh, I'm beating you. All right, OK. Did I All just right. beat you? You did. You kind of beat me a little bit. You got two tickets. <laughs> Plus your, two, your two plus my one. We can probably buy we'll like a, an eraser. An eraser. And a pepper <laughs> you ready? Ready. Let's do this. <sighs> okay. You know what? You're in my town now. <laughs> oh. Maybe I should have pursued this as a career. Dang it. <laughs> The boardwalk is something that not all vacation destinations have. This is relatively new. The, the upgraded boardwalk is about a mile long and it's going to be extended even further. 
Um, and it's got a, such a great combination of the new Myrtle Beach, some of the new bars, the new restaurants, and new shops, and the old Myrtle Beach, you know, like the Gay Dolphin behind us that I grew up going to, and my mom went to, and my grandmother went to. So yeah, you know, to have that old and that new mix and that sort of uh, family root of, of Myrtle Beach is just great. Well, I am so grateful to have had you as my tour guide today, Jamie. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so happy you made it. The weather, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I don't know what you did as a local meteorologist <laughs> to pull strings there. <laughs> uh, make a couple calls, pull a couple strings. You know but, people. <laughs> but yeah, so happy you made it. And more importantly, really hope you come back again. Oh, absolutely. Good, can't I wait. I have to. Good, yes. It was so much fun. This helps too. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, we're hitting the links with an amazing golf pro, but we might have to use a mulligan. Oh, into the water we went. And later, see why we're going Lulu over this banana bread French toast. That and more when the Southern Weekend continues. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is home to some of the best golf courses in the United States. So on our Southern Weekend Road Trip, we decided to hit the links. We met up with golf pro Meredith Kirk at the Grande Dunes Golf Resort for a quick tour and lesson. And well, let's just say she had her work cut out for her. We are on the 14th hole at Grand Dunes Golf Resort, and this is our signature hole here. It's I absolutely amazing, right? <laughs> Look at this view. It's so scenic. I mean, five of the holes here are on the Intracoastal Waterway, and then you also have a great view of the Grand Dunes Marina, and boats come in, and it's really oh. just not only scenic, but it's relaxing. And this is just one of, what, 22 golf courses that Founders owns in the area? Yes, this is one of 22, and there's so many courses um, that offer so many different options from practice facilities to the clubhouse to the course, and right. whatever you're looking for, uh, you can find here in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> I'm excited. I, you know, I've been to a couple driving ranges. I've played putt-putt a few times, but you may have your work cut out with me today. I'm apologizing well, in advance. You're going to be great. Hey, you know how to play putt-putt, right? Sure. It's a step. We're just going to build from that. <laughs> yeah, but taking a look at this hole, though, for this shot right here, all you have to really think about is just clearing that body of water. So even if you're a little short, that's OK. But again, it's fun just teeing off on a hole that's so beautiful like this. We're going to have a lot of fun. How do you um, suggest the grip? Grip? Yeah. Okay. You can just put your hand a little bit right, and then you can get your three fingers here. Okay. Your pinky's kind of hanging out, and you're okay. just going to overlap right there. And then you're just going to flex your <clears throat> knees. What I want you to feel is your pelvis going out a little bit. Okay. Like kinda, it's going to feel like you're, you're sticking your backside out, 
It feels Which worse. Which is the camera. <laughs> it feels worse than it looks, I promise, okay? okay? <laughs> but it gets you in a good athletic position, okay? okay. There okay. you go. That looks really good. Awesome job. And then? Then just swing through it. Yep, let's do one okay. more practice swing. <laughs> You're doing great. Okay. Just kind of swipe the ground as you go through. Oh, yeah, that looks great. Into the water we went. <laughs> <laughs> but you had, you did good. This is your first time. It's okay. You just want to go There's swimming. A lot of work to do. That was a good try. Okay. Okay. So what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and go up to my ball, and I want to show you what this hole looks like from the green That'd because be great. the view is amazing. And these greens are in such great condition. Oh, uh, <laughs> we have a little well, wind be competing. Before we go up to this, you want to try it? Sure. You can do this. Yeah. Let's go back here. Okay. Good. Very good. That was a good start. You want to give it a go again? Sure. Oh, <laughs> you almost had it. You almost had it. You've got it. Uh. Oh, almost. Finally, <laughs> success. You did fabulous. Thank you, thank you. That was a lot of fun. I can see why people, once they get bit, they're golfers for life. Yes. All that swinging and missing worked up an appetite. So we headed back towards the beach to visit Lulu's Cafe. How did you come up with the name Lulu's? My best friend started calling me Lulu after I had my first son. She said, you have gone Lulu. Which is true, you know, and so it just kind of stuck. We started with this building as an idea, and I wanted it to be kind of like it had been here forever, to look like it was part of the old Myrtle Beach. Back in the old Myrtle Beach, everything was really mom and pop, and it was very much personal. And every person that walked in the door, you knew them, and they knew you, and that's kind of what I was looking for here. anything on the menu that I don't serve my family at home. And I always use the best ingredients um, because I eat here so much. And my family eats here so much. So you've got to They're all working in the kitchen with you. Oh, oh yeah, we've had everybody in the kitchen. And, and if you come in to visit me, you might work in the kitchen too. So what recipe is this one? So this is our um, banana bread French toast. Okay. We start with the sugar and the butter. Whoops, that in okay. here. All right, so we're gonna cream these together. Go ahead, add these in? Yeah, go ahead and just pour those in. Okay. And the rest of this just goes kind of fast. This okay. is vanilla and the key bananas. Right, right, right bananas. Right bananas, yes. okay. Milk. And then the last thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna add the flour. Okay, what does that do? Well, if you add the flour while it was moving, we'd be wearing it. <laughs> so <laughs> speak from experience. Yeah. And then we just raise it back up. There you go again. All right, and then that is it. And this is the consistency that yeah, you're looking for. Yeah, that's it. it. Smells good. I know, Already. it smells delicious. <laughs> All right, and here it goes. And so you just take this and pop it in the oven for 350 for about 30 minutes, and we'll have banana bread. Okay, perfect. So this bread has been baked. It's sat out for a couple days, and it's nice and stale. Yeah, just we have the way you want it. Just the way we want it. It needs to be really low moisture because okay. we're about to dip it in this egg wash, and that's going to bring it all back. And what all do you put in the egg wash? Um, we put cinnamon, eggs, um, some vanilla, and our special ingredient. I knew there you were going to leave something out. It's love. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. It's cream. But we did put a lot of love in it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, just dip take both that, sides. Yeah, just put it in there, dip both sides. Okay. And then I'm gonna put a little butter on the grill here. Just like that. Yep, yeah, just like that. And then we'll leave this on here for um, about two or three minutes per side. So we're just gonna cut this, put it on a plate, and make it look pretty. After adding sliced bananas, chopped pecans, powdered sugar, and a dollop of whipped cream, it was time to eat. Great, let's go eat it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I'm serious though, let's go eat it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's one of my guilty pleasures. Whoa. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could eat that for as a meal. It's not dessert, it's it's, so that good. is a meal. That's so good. 
Up next on our Myrtle Beach adventure, this scenic garden is home to more than just beautiful sculptures. Meet Bo and Ashley. They're right. so cute to look at. And later, grab your lab coats and beakers. We're going to a restaurant where the food and drinks come with a decidedly scientific approach. If you want to see more from any of our road trips, check out thesouthernweekend.com. You'll find videos of our adventures across the South, as well as great tips and recipes. All that and more anytime you want it at thesouthernweekend.com. I've always thought of exploring nature and interacting with fine art as being two completely separate activities. But here at Brook Green Gardens, they found a way to combine the two into an immersive and truly inspirational experience. So how long has Brook Green Gardens been around? So Brook Green Gardens was started by Archer and Anna Hyatt Huntington in 1931. You don't often think of garden and museum is coming together, but you really get both experiences here. You really do, and I think too many people don't realize that Brook Green Gardens is a world-class museum. I, I know, didn't. Over 2,000 works of art by over 400 different artists are here. Gosh, this it's... one's incredible. Look at the detail. This one was actually sculpted by Anna Hyde Huntington to commemorate she and her husband, Archer, and how much they loved the environment, they loved arts, and not just here at Brook Green, but all over. It seems like they loved each other a lot. They did. And they didn't just stop there. They could have, mm. you know, bought this piece of property right. and just put <laughs> sculptures, but adding the garden component, right. it just mm -hmm. really changes the experience. Yeah, they really wanted to highlight this place that they adopted and loved, and the plants and the flowers. Anna loved animals so much, and she loved to sculpt animals, so that's kind of where the zoo came around. People think of zoo, and they think it's, you know, giraffes and elephants, but ours is native wildlife. This isn't a traditional zoo. No, it's not in the way that we don't have, you know, the lions and the tigers and the elephants that you would see, um, a little bit more exotic species like that. And while all animals are important to all the ecosystems all over the world, we want to bring forward the importance of our natural Native American animals. So right now we have animals that are native to South Carolina, specifically the Low Country region. We have gorgeous animals right in our backyard and we want to showcase that. All right, well, I'm going to make you an honorary zookeeper today, Molly. Thank so you. we can go in with these chickens and you can feed a bunch of other animals on our trail as Thank well. Thank you. 
This is my honorary dream. Yes. <laughs> what are these little guys? These are Dominique chickens and they're very young. They're only about six weeks old. Oh, they're babies. They are babies. And then here we have some grain and some dried mealworms. Yum, just what Yeah, you can kind of just throw it to them. It's natural for them to scratch through the dirt. Guys, Wherever do you, you want. Oh, they know. So they would be used on the plantation for meat and eggs and anything chickens can provide you with. So coming up on our North American River Otter exhibit. So this is a male and a female, so that's Bo right there. Ashley, during feeding time, she will snarl and chase Bo away. So you get to feed them as well. <laughs> They're right. so cute to look at. It's they so are, hard to picture them are. being ferocious know, about feeding. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is, you are gonna throw in your food to Bo, and I'm gonna fit my food to Ashley, because if one of the otters has food and the other one doesn't, there's gonna be some fighting going on, and we don't want that. <laughs> All They're right, like so real you're... siblings. Yes, exactly. So come over here, Bo. There you go. And Ashley, you ready? Ready? All right. One, two, three. Yay, we did it. Yeah. No fighting. <laughs> no fighting. <laughs> As we travel across the South, we're always looking for new and unusual places to eat. And in Myrtle Beach, we found one. Welcome to The Chemist. It's a bar and restaurant which uses a cooking style known as molecular gastronomy, which takes a decidedly scientific approach to their food. So what is molecular gastronomy? Basically, it's the ability to take food and manipulate it and then changing the shape of it and using different techniques that weren't always thought upon or looked upon as being good. You know, they were scared to use them at first. From a science aspect, I mean, obviously the aesthetic here is very science influenced. There's the periodic table on the floor. But are you actually cooking using instruments that maybe you wouldn't find in a traditional kitchen? There's not too much that's traditional about our kitchen, really. <laughs> Things like uh, immersion circulators, an antique griddle that goes to minus 34 degrees. What? Wow, that's beautiful. Oh my gosh. So, so these aren't real. I don't even, that's not an egg, I'm assuming. It's not an egg. That Incredible is our mango buttermilk panna cotta, and it's also garnished with candied bacon. So it'll taste real sweet. It may look like an egg. Watch it, it moves on you. Take a little bite. Oh man. Good yes. stuff. <laughs> That's great. After trying our mango flavored egg, we went behind the bar with Lucky, who's equal parts bartender and scientist. This is a basic martini. It's called the uh, modern teeny. So, I got my little bit of vodka in there, a little bit of olive juice in there. Man. It's all you. So you add ice. Add a little bit of ice. Okay. All right, so good. you got it? Yep. All right, now I'm going to take this part. Okay. And I'm going to take this, and you are about to make all the cool stuff happen. <laughs> so you're going to pour that right in there. Oh, it's warm. Uh -huh. Okay. That's good. <laughs> this is a olive spear. And this is a whole bunch of little olives, all pureed up, and then made into form one solid olive. So it's like an olive with the power of a thousand. So what I do is I give that to people and I say, hey, do you like dirty martinis? Uh -huh. And if they say yes, uh -huh. then I give them a toothpick and they bust that ball, and it's the filthiest martini you've ever had. Oh my gosh, this is my kind of martini. There you go. I love foul, filthy martinis. Oh yeah, you'll, you'll <laughs> definitely like this. Can I try them now? Oh yeah, you ready? You'll take that. Okay and bust it, and you're gonna stir it up. Bust it? Yeah. I'm so excited Definitely. about this. There it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Danger. Mmm. That is so good. So. I'm so glad I like all of this. Up next, we're traveling up the road to Florence, South Carolina, and you'll be nuts if you miss this.
About an hour and a half northwest of Myrtle Beach is Florence, South Carolina, a town which has embraced a southern staple, the pecan, and made it a focal point of a weekend getaway. I've heard that Florence is arguably one of the nuttiest towns around. I assume they're not talking about the people. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Maybe they are. <laughs> but we are the hub of the South Carolina Pecan Trail. What we have are about 20 different restaurants and shops that have pecans as part of their recipe or they specialize in flavored pecans. A lot of our restaurants are getting really creative. They're adding it to ravioli. They're mm -hmm. um, topping goat cheese salad with pecans. There's even one restaurant that does a really big Danish and it's a Danish pizza. And it is covered in pecans, tastes just like a Danish, it's awesome. We actually, we have it set up so that you have a passport. You can go ahead and go to each one of the places and get a stamp. And you don't even have to go through customs. You don't. This is my kind of travel. <laughs> well here, here's your passport oh, and you. I will stamp it for Young Plantation. I can be official already, perfect. Yep. After getting our passport stamped, we were off to the Rebel Pie, where they put a sweet spin on an ordinary pizza. It's called our Pecan Danish Pizza. And I kind of came up with it. Uh, lifelong baker, owned a retail bakery at one time, so I always liked the Danish and everything. So we tried to translate that into a pizza concept. So basically we take our pizza dough and we put some uh, nice melted grade A butter on there, some cinnamon sugar mix. Uh, we brown that in the oven a little bit and add uh, pecan pieces kind of toast those up a little bit, and then we pull it out with some uh, homemade roll icing on there, and uh, it's really good. And so here we have the uh, Rebel Pie Southern Pecan Danish Pizza. It smells like brown sugar heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome. <laughs> it looks like a, a cinnamon roll on a pizza. The nuts really make it. Mm -hmm. The pecans are great. See, I don't even like nuts and chocolate bars, and I love this. <laughs> we'll expect to see you at least once a month. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make it official. All right. Can you stamp let's, my book? Let's stamp my passport, the book. please. Here you are. Your passport to pecan pleasure. <laughs> right there. Well, that does it for this road trip. I'm Molly McKinney. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Southern Weekend. Get ready to get wild, get serious, get cooking, knock those up, and get on the water. Send you down some rapids. This Southern weekend is full of adventure, from farmer's markets to feathered friends. Look at that tongue! <laughs> we'll paddle through the middle of a city, make friends with a 200-year-old lady, and meet a kid named Eddie, who just happens to be 40 feet tall. And as always, we'll eat plenty of good food along the way. That's delicious. Mm. So come join the adventure as we explore Columbia, South Carolina on The Southern Weekend. I'm Molly McKinney. I travel across the South meeting amazing people. We're dancing, we're having a good oh, time. Right. We're tasting delicious food. That is outstanding. And exploring great new places to visit. I love weekends in the South, and I think you will too. Let's go check it out. So come join the adventure as we start The Southern Weekend. Columbia, South Carolina is the capital of the Palmetto State, home to the University of South Carolina, and the birthplace of a truly unique farmer's market. Every Saturday, locals and visitors alike experience an explosion of culture right in the heart of the city. So that's where we got our Southern Weekend started, 
at Soda City Market. the downtown of Columbia, South Carolina, yeah. but I didn't yeah. expect there to be people from all over the world It's here. interesting. Columbia is the most underrated town in the South. So where did Soda City come from? Where did that idea That's come from? That's a little nickname. Cola SC is something people around here write on the letter. Instead of Columbia, we just put Cola. Why? Because it's too hot to write the whole word. <laughs> That's why. So you started this whole market downtown. Yes. I farmed here in South Carolina for 20 years, and about halfway through that, I needed a place to sell my things. Got five of my farmer friends together, and we started the market with only six vendors in November of 2005. How big is it now versus when you started? We're fielding around 150 vendors on three blocks on Main Street. In the 11 plus years that we've been doing this market, we've never missed a single week of local produce. Jamila, this is Molly from hey. Southern Weekends. This is Jamila from Azerbaijan. This is my favorite breakfast. I was thinking to myself, somebody needs to do this because avocado toast is so popular on social media. And I've been experimenting at home, and, I'm, and now I contacted Soda City people, and they were so embracing of the idea. Can I try one? I would love to. I'll make you an original one. It's basically mashed avocado, smoked seasoning with some salt and lime. Mmm. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you for making my day. Kyle Style. Hi, Emil. How you doing, brother? What's up? Hey, Good. I'm Molly. Hey, Kyle Smith. Nice to Good to meet you. you. I'd love to learn a little more about your pieces. Well, I mean, the craftsmanship is beautiful. Well, thank you. I, I started using a porcelain and a stoneware blend of clay. It's very durable. I used to make a lot of decorative pieces. People would say, it's nice. I just don't have the room for it. So when I switch to this clay body that's more functional, people will find room for it because they say, I, I need that in my life. Do you think there's anywhere else in town that you can have this kind of experience? No, no, this is almost like a weekly festival. The amount of people that come out, it's unbelievable. I call it a town square. It is like a town yeah. square. You meet it's new people, you see old friends, you see the people you haven't seen hall. in a long time. <laughs> Customers get excited when they see new vendors and they, they welcome them. They're very gracious to, to see them come and keep the market growing. Thank you so much. This is so fun talking to you. Molly, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And Thank enjoy you. the market. There's we a lot will. to see and have fun. We Thank will. you. Take care, Emma. Bye-bye. Molly, this is Hugo. You know this is Molly. Molly, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Is this you? I told yeah. Hugo he was going to be a superstar the first time I met him. And I was right. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Madrid. How has Spanish paella been received in Colombia, South Carolina? Well, at the beginning, it took me a while. Now it's going pretty well. So you want to taste it? Yeah? Yes. OK. Is that a question? And so in this one, uh, I use just yes, chicken thighs and chicken wings. OK. And uh, a lot of spices that are secret. Uh-huh. <laughs> no. I'm sure. Now I use saffron, small paprika. I bring all the stuff from Spain. This is the, the good stuff. Great. So Thank there you. There you go. Let me get you a fork. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. There's a squid some lemon in it. Oh, that's squid too? A squid, some octopus, clams, mussels, shrimps. I understand now why he'd come find you if you ever left this market. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. From the sights and the smells to the fantastic people we met today, I'm so glad we came. Thank you so much for coming out, and, and especially for coming to Columbia, South Carolina, and show everybody uh, what a great place this is. And the market's here every weekend. Every, every weekend, weekend, rain or shine, all year round, unless it's Christmas. If you wake up in Columbia, South Carolina, <laughs> you can come on down here on Saturday mornings. <laughs> up next, there's no better way to cool off on a hot southern day than by getting out on the water. And later, we'll meet Bruce. The only thing bigger than this guy is his appetite. I cannot believe how long their tongues are. <laughs> if you want to see more from any of our road trips, check out thesouthernweekend.com. You'll find videos of our adventures across the South, as well as great tips and recipes. All that and more anytime you want it at thesouthernweekend.com.
Production support for this episode of The Southern Weekend provided by Greater KC West Columbia Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. Make time to live. When you think of heading out into a city, you usually don't think to grab a paddle. But as we found out, it's one of the best ways to enjoy Columbia. Well, this is breathtakingly gorgeous. Molly, welcome to KC West Columbia, just a bridge away from downtown Columbia, South Carolina. And I'm embarrassed to admit, I had no idea this was here. I mean, the great outdoors right adjacent to the city. We're one of the few places in the nation that you can actually be on whitewater, actually canoeing and kayaking during the day and see a play at night. Um, we literally can get out of the river here instead of going sitting in our tents. We can stay in a three or four star hotel and enjoy all the amenities of being downtown great. city. So tell me more about the river walk itself. You can walk along the river, great place to hike, bike, uh, walk your dog. Have you participated in some of the water activities? You know, one of my favorite yeah. things to do actually is to come tubing down here. We start just above the zoo. Tubing sounds real glamorous. Well, you know, lay you, there you just kind of lay, relax, but you go through some really some rapids, so you get some humps and bumps. And the, <laughs> the really interesting thing is we do it during the heat of the summer when it's 90 degrees outside and that river is 52 degrees all year long. And you can canoe as well, right? You can canoe, you can kayak, uh, you can tube, however you want to come down the river in a lot of different ways. So anything you recommend I do today with the, yeah, the summer humidity? I think humidity? I've got a great idea. Let's get you on this river, which is 52 degrees as it's running, give you the cool air coming by. We're gonna send you down some fun, get you in some rapids, kick you around a little bit. You up for it? I'm totally up. I feel like this is a compliment because you think I'm above tubing level just from looking at me. I don't know if you are, but <laughs> we're, we're gonna, gonna see. <laughs> hey there. Hey. Hi. So what river are we gonna be on today? Yeah, so here's actually a map of our trip. Okay. Put you in here, which is right above the Riverbank Zoo region, and then from there you actually float around the elbow, which is the slowest part of your trip. And then after the elbow, you come across the Shandon Rapid. Okay. It's about a fun class two rapid with waves to about a foot to a foot and a half tall. And then after that, you've got maybe about an hour, hour and a half left of your trip, and then you'll end up right back here at the Gervais Street Bridge. Perfect. Yep, but since you're all signed up, we can just get you a life jacket. Awesome. And just hang around here in the shaded area and we'll make an announcement when our shuttle's ready to board. Okay, just any of these? Yep. It's been good? All right, cool. Thank you. Oh yeah, you're welcome. It's hot today. It's gonna feel good to get in some river water. Let's go! It's gonna be a little bit further down. There's going back. It's getting serious. How do I look? Look ready? The second you come around the bend and see those two highway bridges, make your way to the right side of the river if you're not already there, okay? Man, that was a blast. That was so much fun. Who knew you could do all of this in Columbia, South Carolina? I'll be back. That was awesome. Thank you. Still to come, we get face to face with some feathered friends, a 200 year old tortoise, and our buddy Bruce sticks his head in to say hello. Look at that tongue! <laughs> that and more when the Southern Weekend continues. I think Alabama is known for barbecue and, and grits. We're in the South. But Huntsville is a thriving community that has a lot of people who've traveled all over and they bring those experiences here. Huntsville brings a lot to the food scene. We have everything from soul food and barbecue to four and five star dining. We have experienced a great growth in our food scene in the last few years. It has been wonderful to see, wonderful to experience, and definitely wonderful to taste. 
The Huntsville food scene is really growing. Whether you're here, downtown, or anywhere in Huntsville, you're gonna find great cooking. Huntsville Restaurant Week is in August every year. It's a 10-day celebration of our locally owned and operated restaurants. Restaurant Week is, uh, is great for us because it gives us the opportunity to feed people that might not come here ordinarily. Instead of maybe going to a chain restaurant, they can come to a freestanding downtown restaurant. They venture out and try something unique. You have people that are driving from all over to experience what Huntsville has to offer, and we're so excited about what Huntsville has to offer this year. If you're in the Midlands area of South Carolina, the Riverbanks Zoo and Garden is a must-see. I love animals, and I've been told we may even get up close and personal with a few, so I can't wait to get inside and check it out. Welcome to Riverbank Zoo and Garden. You are in for a real treat. We are a 170 acre zoo and botanical garden and on the zoo side we have nearly 2,000 animals. That's 350 different species from around the world. Like and then one every day for a year. <laughs> I know and then on the botanical garden side we are home to more than 4,300 species of native and exotic plants. You know, it is our mission to foster an appreciation and concern for all living things. We get people through the gates, we, they have fun, we educate them, and in turn, we hope that they go home and take action for conservation. We're standing on Giraffe Overlook, um, and this is where people can um, actually come up on a daily basis and feed our giraffe herd. And this is Bruce. <laughs> and his tongue's very soft. It's not at tongue, all like sandpaper or anything. Soft, not too bad. Look at that tongue! <laughs> I cannot believe how long their tongues are. <laughs> they are. I guess that's what they they need to be Super able long. to reach into the trees. Yeah, and, and a lot of people don't realize that their tongues are black. No. And it's one thing to have the tall necks, but the long tongues, man, they are prepared to get up in those trees. Absolutely. I'd like to welcome you to Penguin Coast here at Riverbank Thank Zoo you. in our birdhouse. Hello, so who do we have here? Uh, this is Scout. He's one Scout. of our king penguins. We have three of those. We have Scout, Grace, and Atticus. Right behind you, the little one right there, they are rock hoppers. They've got those bright yellow crest feathers on top of their head. The one that's kind of taking his little morning snooze over there, those are our Gen 2 penguins. Hi, sweetie. I like you, Scout. This is Scout still, right? Yes, it is. So all three of these species get along together? They do. keep them in the same exhibit? Yeah, they do. Actually, in the wild, they can be found together. So they're on the sub-Antarctic islands between South America and Antarctica. So you can find them together in the wild. So most zoos will have them together in zoos as well. What is it that you hope people will take away from this exhibit? How different they are from other birds. Obviously, they don't fly. Um, but seeing them and seeing the way they act, the way they are towards one another, the way they're with the keepers and how, how I don't like to say how fun they are, but how fun they are watching them swim, watching them interact with one another and just learning to love any wild animal, any animal here at the zoo, not just our exhibit, but every exhibit here. 
So Scott, I'm told I get to meet a friend of yours. A very special friend, one of our Galapagos tortoises. And one of the interesting Large things friends. about this animal is he's so old that he could have hatched out of the egg when Thomas Jefferson was president of the United States. What? But this animal right here, Hi. Conchita, came off the Galapagos Islands in 1928. That's when it came to the United States and was probably an adult then. So what do they eat? Well, they mostly eat vegetation. So they eat lots and lots of grass. So they eat a high bulk, low protein diet. So they eat all the time, but they don't get a lot of nutrition out of it. So we have to resod this exhibit every year because they eat all of the grass. She weighs about 400 pounds, but our largest male weighs pounds. 650 pounds. And so just to put that in perspective, uh, that animal weighs more than our tigers, more than our lions, more than our grizzly bears. So these tortoises, which can get to be a thousand pounds, are really, really big animals. Girl, you got a ways to go. Uh, they do. We got to fatten you up. But they start out being much smaller. So this is one of our baby Galapagos tortoises. It's only <gasps> two years old. This is a, this is going to be that big <laughs> in a couple. It's going to be very, very big. Just a couple hundred years. Yeah, and, and this is an endangered species. It is an I endangered mean, this species. is the future for this it, species. It absolutely is. If we ever need to, we could take these animals, put them back on the Galapagos Islands to mm. bolster the wild population. What is it like for you to be able to be breeding an endangered species mm -hmm. in captivity and hopefully giving them hope for well, the future? It's, well, it's, it's very fulfilling for us, but in some ways it's a very slow motion project. This animal right here isn't supposed to breed until he's 55 years old. That's why you can't harvest turtles you know, for food like we used to do with diamondback terrapins. Their reproductive rate is slow, slow. It's just not sustainable. At close to 200 years old, maybe over 200 years old, I can't imagine everything she's seen in her lifetime. Yeah, the things that Thank they've you, seen that, that we'll never know. Thank you. We'll let her be. Get some <laughs> sunshine. <laughs> and you're coming with us. Up next, We'll step inside the mind of a child to find out just how much fun learning can be. That and more when the Southern Weekend continues. This family-owned restaurant in West Columbia, South Carolina, serves up Southern-inspired dishes. And we're heading into the kitchen with the executive chef to see the kind of food that's made them successful for more than 20 years. Hey, how's it going today? Good, Good. I'm so happy to be here. I've heard so much Glad about the here. food here at Cafe Strudel. We're really known for breakfast and brunch, but we do lunch, dinner, we do all kinds of stuff. Great in-house pastries. We started off as a little deli-style shop 20 years ago. My, my mom started it up. And it's not all Southern, right? Um, 
No, I mean, we got a lot of southern staples, you know, like shrimp and grits and uh, fried green tomatoes and pimento cheese and stuff like that. But you never know what you're going to get. Where does your inspiration come from? Um, my inspiration, I'd, I'd have to say my mom. I was um, three years old in the kitchen trying to scramble eggs with her, and my mom got a lot of cooking from her mom. I just always loved cooking. Do you want to go try some food? I would you want love to cook to try some a little food. bit? You want me to cook? I'm gonna have you cook. Yeah, you got. I mean, you can wash dishes, but I'm gonna get you <laughs> cooking. Cook. <laughs> you cook. Cook. I'll tell you just some things. All right. Let's start off with a nice appetizer of some duck nachos. We are pretty well known for this. We cook it nice and slow in duck fat. It's basically called duck confit. I've got some fried tortilla chips here. Those look delicious on their own. I've got some duck, which I'm gonna put it right on top. <laughs> Why not, right? Right. So, stuff is awesome. It's really rich. So I got a little bit here if you'd like to try it. Yeah, I'd love to try it. There you go. It smells delicious. That's really good. We just, like I said, slow cook it. Yes. Oh, that's perfect. We respect the food. It's all about, It's not you know, greasy or anything. Right. It's just the perfect consistency. Yeah, just, yeah that's yep. great. All right, so I've got some smoked Gouda. We uh, just shredded it up and mixed it with some milk. Cooked it down into uh, a little so bit of a sauce, good. you know? So I'm going to drizzle some over here. It's just so creamy and that smokiness with that little bit of saltiness. I would never think to use this. I mean, most people, <laughs> what are the most common cheeses for nachos, like cheddar and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, or just this like white American shame. cheese, like queso mix. Might as well try this while yeah, we're... Yeah, go ahead, try that out. That's divine, that's heaven. Balances of flavor is what we're going for. So next, I'm putting a little sweet Thai chili still sauce. Looking. <laughs> now, it might sound a little... It, it's interesting. Thai you know? chili on Sweet Thai chili duck on okay. duck with smoked Gouda cheese sauce. So you're gonna have the saltiness, the richness from the duck, the smokiness and that, yes. that creaminess from the cheese. And then this just adds a little bit of something extra. What's next? Do you put garnish? Yeah, or is just that a few just... more green onions for garnish. That's it, just a little bit of Look at that presentation. That's thing. beautiful. That's a big, big old, old bite. Yeah, right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Dude. I'll never get tired of that. <laughs> That's delicious. Yeah, like you said, good balance of flavors is what people want, really. And then that, that crunch from the tortilla, you know, to just get that This, is, this isn't any texture, tortilla chip. Texture and, and flavors. <laughs> you want to have it all. Doug nachos up. With our stomachs full, it was time to fill our minds. We traveled to the Adventure Children's Museum, where kids and families can experience the joy of learning. It's hard to miss Eddie. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about that exhibit and why it's important. Eddie's fabulous, and he's so impressive on the outside, but it's the inside of Eddie that is really miraculous for the children because he's a lesson in anatomy while they play. So they're climbing through him, but his brain synapses are going off. You literally hear it. When his heart beats, they can slide through the intestines, you climb up his spine. Kids are having fun, but they're understanding where the organs are in relation to each other inside Eddie. And I love standing in the lobby and watching children walk in when they see him for the first time and the awe on their faces. Um, you can hear them right now. You can, you can. And then the other thing is that Eddie shows us that we're all the same on the inside. I love that. exhibits you can explore here? Well, when you first come in, if you look over to your left, you're going to see a fire truck, and that usually draws the kids in. And that's about teaching fire safety. That's an issue in South Carolina. We want kids to be safe. Then they can climb tires inside, which is fun, and learn about seatbelt safety. There's always something new and different here. For example, we're putting the finishing touches on our flight exhibit. NASA has come together with us and the City of Columbia to create a whole new exhibit that gets kids excited about aeronautics. We're thinking through how can we get kids excited. We thought, we well, you know what, if we stick an airplane right out of the side of the building, that will get people excited. <laughs> we have a Boeing 757 cockpit that children and families can sit in and look across the Gervais Street Bridge. It's the best view of the bridge in town, I think. 
What I love firsthand is that it's a hands-on experience too for these children. That's right. Well, young children in particular learn by doing. Sensory motor is how they learn. So I still learn by doing. Right, I don't know exactly. It, right, we all do. We exist to keep that fire ignited, and you do that by giving children and families opportunities to explore together by touching, by feeling. If you walk into our grocery store exhibit on a Saturday afternoon, it's it can it be a little like crazy. A real grocery store it looks Saturday. like it looks like one before a snowstorm is what it looks like. But that's good. that means learning has happened. Our purpose, um, Adventure's purpose, any children's museum's purpose, is to make people love to learn. That does it for this road trip. I'm Molly McKinney. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on The Southern Weekend.